To me, wine is both. It's a art form, it's a culture, but most importantly, it's a lifestyle. And wine is all aspects of our life, whether you're drinking it, whether you're educating about it, whether you're serving it to guests in a restaurant or in a place like this, which is a retail place, recommending different guests, all these experiences that you can have with wine. One of my favorite things about wine is if you're not someone who gets to travel very often, you get to travel to all different parts of the world purely by drinking a wine from that region. It's one of my favorite experiences with wine is the beauty of kind of virtually traveling to a place only by drinking a glass of wine. I think people should try to understand better the wine that they drink because it gives you more of an appreciation for the art form that goes into making wine. Wine is a massive amount of work to get this delicious drink inside of one bottle. You go from harvesting the grapes and all the different kinds of grape varieties they, there are is going to dictate what that wine is tasting like. Then you have in the winery itself where different aspects of winemaking can change the way that specific grape tastes to bottling, to coming over to America or wherever you are. It's pretty amazing all of the work and all of the love and all of the passion that goes into making wine. So the more you understand it, the more you appreciate it. The best taste of wine I've ever had. That's a really hard one to go for. So maybe the most memorable taste of wine I've ever had is when I was super green. I was a brand new sommelier at Nove Italiano. I was opening a bottle for a guest and it was the 2000 vintage of Masetto, which is 100% Merlot coming from the Tuscany region of Italy. And over the course of six hours, I got to taste this wine evolve in the glass. Every time I walked into the cellar to grab another bottle of wine for another guest in the restaurant, I would take a little sip of that wine. And it was profound and amazing and eye-opening. And it's the reason why I'm in the business. I really fell in love with wine at that point, just seeing how one glass of wine evolved over six hours in time. And the wine itself was not an uh, inexpensive wine by any means. And so just the quality showed through over the course of those six hours. It's one of the most amazing wine experiences I have ever had. The single best tip I can give to any wine drinker is to explore, to experiment, to not be afraid to try new things. The best way you can figure out what you like is to figure out what you don't like. So taste the world, taste everything, trust whoever is giving you recommendations about what to taste, and if you don't like it, tell them what you don't like about it. Maybe it's too bitter, it's too floral, it's too fruity, whatever the case is, and the more you know about what you don't like, the better you'll find wines that make you fall in love with the industry that I fell in love with. So sommeliers are artists, critics, educators, and so much more than that when it's a good sommelier. So just like any industry, you have mediocre people in the industry and you have amazing, truly high caliber people of the industry. And sommeliers are critics in the way that they help you decide what wine that you are going to have. They're artists in the way that they can take just a few bits of advice that you give them about what you like or what you dislike and create an absolutely memorable experience. They're educators because at the same time of doing all of this, they're telling you about the wine, about the producer, where it comes from, how it's made, how it tastes, why it goes with the food that you ordered. And on top of that, sommeliers are so much more than that. We are journey givers, we are experience makers. And a truly amazing sommelier can go from talking to you about everyday life, to the cuisine that's in their restaurant, to the wine that you're drinking, to why they go so well together, giving you advice on what to do in their, their city. So many amazing things. It's all about hospitality and going above and beyond to make your experience with them the most amazing, most memorable experience that they could possibly give you. I would advise my younger self to slow down and to enjoy life. 
I have been a hard worker for my entire life. I worked in high school, I had three jobs in college, I've always worked 80 plus hours, traveled while I'm not working to learn more about whatever I'm doing at that moment. Um, I've kind of had a few different lives in my time. I was previously a certified architect for residential. Before that, I was in automotive advertising. I've done government work as a secretary. I've kind of had a ton of lives. And my biggest advice would be just to slow down, to enjoy life, to travel more for pleasure rather than from work, and to really enjoy the hard work that I've put into my life and just really, that's it, just enjoy more. I definitely have so many mentors on my journey in the wine world. They are crucial in this business. I think in any business, you need to have a mentor who can coach you through how to better yourself, how to work through issues or questions or difficulties or anything that you experience along the way in your journey as well as to guide you and to help you. A mentor is there to help you grow, to help with your experiences. I've had mentors for tasting, mentors for theory, professional mentors to help me grow and become the educator that I am today, the sommelier that I was before when I was working on the floor. I think every aspect of your life, it's really crucial to have a mentor. And so many people are afraid to ask others for help and to ask them to help them grow. But it's really rewarding. I'm a mentor now myself, and it's really rewarding when you have someone reach out to you and say, I love what you do, you're amazing at this, can you help me be better? Can you help me do what you do? And it's one of the most rewarding things, even on the opposite side of being a mentor and watching someone blossom and grow, kind of before your eyes. It's crucial in my opinion, both ways, to be a mentor and to have a mentor. Wow, so yes, um, I think success can be achieved. In my opinion, I have achieved it, but I don't think success is a solid thing. I think you have many successes through your life and you strive to continue to have many successes in your life. To me, the definition of success would be to be doing something every single day that you love and that you're passionate about. And when you have a career that you are passionate about and that you enjoy doing, you are happy in your day-to-day -day life. And if you're happy day-to-day, -day, that to me is success. So once you hit one point of your life where you're like, this is amazing, push yourself to grow, to go out of your comfort zone and to reach another success and another success and another success in your career and you will become as happy and as amazing as you can be. If I could share a glass of wine with any two people, I'll pick one professional and I'll pick one personal. So the one personal person would be my grandfather. He passed away before I was like getting into this industry and he was one of my favorite people in the entire world. So uh, I would love to be able to sit down with him and just talk to him about life, talk to him about his recommendations for how I'm doing, for what I could be doing better. He actually made rhubarb wine from rhubarb that we grew in our backyard. So it would be really fun to sit down with him over a glass of rhubarb wine, which maybe sounds a little faux pas as a sommelier to say that, but it would be something just to bring back the memories of being with him, talking with him, tasting the rhubarb wine when I was a kid, and enjoying just my time with him. On a professional level, the most amazing conversation I've ever had with anybody in this industry is with the late Patrick Leone. He was a consultant, a pioneer, a, a, a titan of this industry. And I was fortunate enough a few years ago to be able to sit down and have a group dinner with him. And of that time, I got to spend maybe five or 10 minutes with him talking. And it was the most enlightening, encouraging, amazing moments of my life in, when it comes to this industry. And unfortunately, he passed away last year, but I would love to be able just to sit down one-on-one -on -one with him and be able to have 
just a full-on conversation about his journey, his life, this industry, um, and get geeky with him again because it was one of the most incredible experiences. I will never, ever forget it. So with my grandfather, I would serve him probably that rhubarb wine that I was talking about before is Again, it's not something that you think of as a sommelier to drink rhubarb wine or any other wine that's not made from grapes. However, it would you know, bring back the memories of what he used to do, what he used to make. Rhubarb wine was something that he was passionate about, so I would like to share that passion with him now that I have an understanding of what wine actually is and what rhubarb wine is as well. For my glass of wine with Patrick Leone, when he stopped consulting for the top, top wineries that you think of in the world today, he decided to retire to the south of France. And his passion project that he did after consulting for some of the most iconic wineries of the entire world was to make rosé. And I was fortunate enough last year to actually go to his property in the south of France in the region of Provence and fell in love with the region. It's a beautiful, beautiful region. So if I could have a glass of wine with him, it would probably be his wine from the south of France sitting uh, on the coast with him and just talking about life and his passion and how he went from making these big, amazing, inspiring red wines to coming back to making rosé wine. I have a lot of wine bottles in my home. Uh, my partner is also in the wine business, so we actually have three separate wine coolers in our house. Always in the house is my I could probably call this my favorite wine on the planet. It's the only wine that I personally collect, which is called Fonte Canali. It's um, by Tiberio coming out of the Abruzzo region in Italy, and it is the most incredible white wine that you'll ever have in your life. She doesn't make many bottles of it. It's very small production, um, and it's not expensive by any means. It's very moderately priced, but it's the most inspiring wine that I've ever had. So that's always in my house. Um, I love Italian wine in general, so any like Nebbiolo, which happens to be my favorite grape, it's the grape that got me into industry, it's the grape that I have tattooed on my wrist, and I always have Nebbiolo in my house. Pretty much anything Italian is always in my house. And then I would say easy drinking white wines, just simple, refreshing, things I don't have to think about that I can just sip and, and enjoy. The best advice I've ever been given in my life is never stop learning. The wine industry is gigantic and even though I have the credentials I've had and I've achieved the success that I have, there are so many things I don't know about this industry and the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And so always strive to push yourself to learn more, to do more, to branch out of, out of your comfort zone and never stop learning. I have not experienced VR before. I am not a super techie person, so when I was reached out to, to do this, I was so excited because this is way out of my zone of any knowledge when it comes to anything. And I think it's one of the coolest things that is happening right now, and I think it's cutting edge, and they're really getting above and before the trend, and I think this is gonna be something truly amazing. On the VR Loop platform, I, I thought about this a little bit. I think it would be really cool to see, I was a cheerleader in high school, so I think seeing cheerleaders and how intensive uh, of programs and everything that they do would really be cool, or even a gymnast and see them flipping and how they do their flips would be awesome. Also, I grew up with race car drivers, so I think having a race car driver, I don't know if you can have the camera in the car, but while they're doing like their crazy tricks, I think that would also be really cool. Filming my VR Loop experience was one of the most fun things I have ever done. It's I've never spoken this much on camera, let alone had this many cameras facing at me ever in my life, but it was so much fun to be able to share my passion and talk about wine on just like a basic level and then bring my friends in to share all of our passion and all of our experience with you is really incredible. I can't wait to see how this turns out. The message I would like for you all to take away from this VR Lou experience is that wine is fun. It's a grape juice, boozy grape juice at that. And 
Wine has a bit of a reputation of being this prestigious thing that's only for the elite crowd, and it's really not. It's an amazing experience that you can have at you know a ten dollar price point all the way up to thousand dollars of price points, and. For more people to really explore and experiment and enjoy wine at any level, it doesn't matter if you're drinking uh, White Zinfandel or you're drinking the most expensive wines of the world. As long as you're getting into this, learning what you love, learning what you enjoy, maybe learning what you dislike as well, so you become even more of a fan of wine and even more of a fan of our industry, I think is the best thing that could happen from this experience.